In this video, we're going to talk about foundations. So this is one of the most important lessons in this whole course, I would say, because foundations are very important to the longevity of your building and foundations often get overlooked, especially when it comes to cob buildings and natural style buildings. So in this video, I'm going to show you four different design models for foundation styles. And out of these four foundation styles, you'll have everything that you need for pretty much any building that you want to do. So the first foundation style here is called a concrete slab on grade. And you'll see the concrete section is a flat, even concrete slab. And underneath it, you'll have compacted uh, drainage gravel. And then underneath that is your raw soil. You'll also notice the frost line is beneath the slab. And then ground level is up here. So the slab is slightly embedded into the ground, but it's pretty much right on the ground. That's why they call it slab on grade. So the frost line is in most cases beneath the slab, which is a disadvantage. However, in this case, we have a drainage system underneath the slab to prevent water collecting underneath the slab and potentially freezing. So something can happen called frost heave, which you want to avoid with foundations. That's when water gets underneath your foundation. It freezes and it expands and can shift your foundation. That's frost heave. So most of the time you want to have your foundation built down beneath the frost line to prevent frost heave. However, we have the drainage rock underneath the slab and sometimes you have French drainage systems as well. Basically draining any water away from the foundation that might collect around or underneath it. So on top of the slab we have our stem wall. This is common for any kind of cob building or earthen building. Also for straw bale, straw clay or hempcrete. And then we have, in this case, the cob wall on top of that. Now over here, we have a note that there's a plastic water barrier between the drainage gravel and the slab. This helps to prevent water from wicking up through underground into the slab. Concrete and brick can actually absorb a lot of water, so it is good to prevent water wicking up. We also have the drainage rock underneath. So you're going to put your drainage rock, then lay the plastic sheeting on top of that. And then in this case, you would place your rebar on top of that and then pour the concrete. And then there are separate videos in the course here on how to form the slab and pour the concrete slab. All right, the next thing here is a water barrier on top of the stem wall. If you're following the COP code, it is required in the code to have a water barrier on top of the stem wall. In this case, you use a tar paint. It's a paint, it's black. They use it on foundations a lot in basements and you paint that on top of your stem wall. So that prevents water from wicking up through the stem wall into the cob wall. All right, let's go to the next one here. This one is very similar, except it has some slight differences. So you'll notice that it's reinforced and it's thicker underneath the cob wall portion. That's why it's called a reinforced concrete slab. This is the ideal system, in my opinion, for cob buildings because cob walls are extremely heavy and they should be reinforced underneath the wall perimeters. I've also done cob walls with flat slab on grade and it also works, but you do have the more potential of a slab cracking under the weight of a cob wall. So ideally the reinforced concrete slab is better for um, any kind of heavy masonry walls like cob walls. So here you'll also see the drainage gravel 
underneath the reinforced slab and it just follows the contour of the slab in this case. So the excavation is a little bit different and I've also got a video on how to do the reinforced slab in the course so you can follow that video. Um, you'll also see the frost line moves down slightly or I should say the foundation moves down slightly. In this case, the gravel is actually beneath the frost line. So that's good. Um, however, your frost line is different depending on wherever you are. Um, ground level, it's the same. So your slab is, again, uh, in this case is actually more embedded in the ground, which is also a good advantage. Having that integration into the ground is always good, especially for any sort of seismic zone. Again, we have the plastic water barrier between the gravel and the slab and the water barrier on top of the stem wall. So now the next system, I call this a footer stem wall foundation. This is a very good solid foundation as well. Very good for heavy earth walls too, except there's a little bit more work involved with these in my opinion. So this, this is called a footer. So this is a concrete slab, basically, that goes underneath the perimeter of the walls. And you'll notice it's a little bit wider than the actual wall for the stem wall. And that gives extra support. So this footer goes down to whatever depth you need. And in this case, it should always be dug beneath the frost line. So that's a great advantage to this system is you can put the foundation beneath the frost line. Sometimes the frost line is very deep though, so this is not practical. For example, if you had to dig down four feet to get under the frost line, that's not practical for this system. Um, you can still do this system in a climate like that, but you're not gonna get it beneath the frost line. That would just be an extreme amount of overbuilding. But, this system is good because in most climates you can get the foundation beneath the frost line then you build the stem wall up on top of that footer to whatever height you need above ground and then put your wall on top of there and then on the inside you're going to install your floor later after the fact so your footers and your stem walls and your walls will all be built around the perimeter first and then at the end at some point you'll come and install the floor on the in uh, on the interior so now here we have what's called a rubble trench foundation this is also a good style foundation it has a lot of history um, and it's very low cost and practical however the downside to this system is that if you're trying to get permits or follow codes you're not likely going to be able to build a foundation this way but you do see a lot of old traditional buildings with rubble trench foundations and this is what most people will teach you um, in a cob workshop is how to do a rubble trench so these are probably the most rudimentary style foundations that you can do they do work but they have some disadvantages. So what you're going to do is dig a trench similar to the footer stem wall style and then you're going to fill that trench with compacted gravel and a lot of the time you'll have a drainage tile down near the bottom to collect water and channel out but it's basically a trench filled with compacted gravel and then you set your stem wall on top of that and then your cobble on top of that and again you do your floor at the end so these are the four main styles of foundations i find that they work for pretty much any style of building and again my favorite for a cob building is the reinforced concrete slab so there's a lot of details when it comes to foundations let me also make a note about rebar. Sometimes, um, if you're in a seismic zone, 
or an earthquake zone, you're going to have rebar involved through foundations and walls. So let's say we're in a high seismic zone. We could potentially have rebar connected from the foundation rebar extending vertically up through the stem wall and then continuing all the way up through the wall and connecting into the bond beam at the top of the wall. So that really makes this whole building one solid monolithic piece. Also really helps to connect the horizontal cob layers. So you might see that involved as well in all of these systems. Maybe not in the rubble trench system. That would be more challenging. Um, you would probably start your rebar from inside the stem wall and continue up from there. So there's a lot of detail involved with foundations. If you guys have questions, leave them in the discussion section below and I'll get to those. And if I need to make more videos on this topic, um, answering your questions, I'll do that too. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to learn more about cob building and natural building, I've got a whole online video course for you. It covers pretty much everything from foundations to building the walls, to putting the roof on, how to install windows and doors, how to do natural plasters and paints and finishes, and pretty much everything in between. Um, it's over 20 hours of video that I've recorded and covers more than most hands-on classes will ever offer at a fraction of the price. So if you wanna get some online education before taking a hands-on class, it's a good supplement too. You can go grab the course. It's all online for download. You get to keep everything and um, you'll learn a whole lot. If you have any questions, you can also contact me directly as a student and get your questions answered. So um, there's a link down in the description. Go check it out. Thanks for watching.